Hi everyone, welcome to satdecoded.com. I want to talk about functions as ordered pairs today. This is one way you can think about functions that will become useful for functions that involve a graph. So for let's take an example. Let's say we have f of x equals x squared minus 4. If we have this function, we want to think about the purpose of having this entire this entire master formula. Well, not every question will give you a master formula. Some questions will actually give you uh, a table or they'll give you a graph. So a table might look like x and f of x and then they'll have a list of values and a list of values. That was in a previous video. In some questions, you might not be given a master formula or a table. Instead, you'll be given some sort of graph. So if you remember from geometry, we have our x and y axis. This is the x, y coordinate plane. And they might give you some sort of graph as the function here. For example, they'll say that curve right here is f of x. So you have to be able to move between these three formats with ease. So right now, I just want to talk about functions as ordered pairs because that's going to help us with this kind of function, the graph functions. So let's take a, take a look at this example right here. f of x equals x squared minus 4. We know that f of x by itself is the output because that entire thing is an output. The functions are always outputs. And we also know outputs are y values. So we can think of the entire function as the y portion of the ordered pair. Remember, ordered pairs are x comma y, which represents a single point on this curve or whatever curve it turns out to, to look like. So if f of x is our output, then what's our input? Well, our input is just the x portion. So x by itself is our input, and our inputs are x values. So whatever we happen to have inside this parentheses is going to be our x value. And when you combine the two together, the x and the y, we get an ordered pair represented in this format, x comma y. So let's actually stick one in. Let's say we have f of 3. So f of 3, if we evaluate that, we know the input is 3. So since the input is 3, that is going to be our x. Remember, x's are our inputs. So in this case, it's equal to 3. Well, what about f of 3? f of 3 as a whole function is an output using this formula. We solve it by replacing it with the x. So 3 squared minus 4, which is 9 minus 4, equals 5. So f of 3, the entire function, gives us 5, which is an output. And remember, outputs are y values. So now we have an x value, 3, as well as a y value, 5. So the ordered pair that we just solved was 3, 5. That fits into this format perfectly. So you can stick in any number you want right here for the input, and you'll be able to solve it and get some sort of output. If you do it enough times, you'll you'll start getting a bunch of ordered pairs. You'll get 3, 5, you do another one like f of 2, f of 1, f of 0. You find out enough and you'll get a bunch of ordered pairs. And when you have all the ordered pairs, you can plot them on the graph right here. So for example, 3, 5, if, we're, if we are going to actually plot that on an xy coordinate plane, it would look like this. 1, 2, 3 on the x-axis and 5 on the y-axis, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3, 5 would be this point up here. If I found out a few more points, we could actually just uh, keep solving, and eventually we would find out what this uh, curve looks like. So there might be a point here, one here, one here, one here. I don't really know. Just some sort of shape will, will come up. So that's how you identify ordered pairs. Let's try another example. This time I'm not going to give you, um, well, I'm not going to draw out the table and I'm not going to draw out the graph until we figured out enough ordered pairs first. So let's talk about f of x. Let's say it equals um, 3x minus 2. So what is the, the input and 
what is the output. Remember, inputs are x values and outputs are y values. So our input is going to be the x. So whatever we stick in for the x, let's say we want to find an order pair for f of 5. So that means the 5 is our input, which is our x. So f of 5 equals 3 times 5 minus 2, which is 15 minus 2 gives us 13, and 13 is our output, which is y. So we've just created the order pair. I'm going to create a little table right here. And this is, in fact, where the table functions come from. The x is, uh, sorry, I'm going to erase that. I'm going to erase this so it's a little clearer. This is where uh, the tables come from. When you find out enough ordered pairs, you can start creating your own table. So if x is 5, we found out y is 13. Remember the y is the same thing as f of x, because both y and f of x is their outputs. So 5 and 13. Let's try another one. We can do 6. So f of 6 equals 3 times 6 minus 2, which is 18 minus 2. 18 minus 2 gives us 16. So 16 is our output, which is our y value. So we've just found out another order pair, 6 comma 16. If we did 7, we just do f of 7 equals 3 times 7 minus 2. That's 21 minus 2, which equals 19. So when the input is 7, the output is 19. And you can do this as many times as you want, but eventually you'll start to create a curve that you can graph graph out on the xy coordinate plane. Remember this, this line right here is the x-axis, it's horizontal, and this is the y-axis, it's vertical. So if we have 5, 13, I'm not going to draw all the tick marks out, but let's say 5 is right here, and let's say 13 is right here. Obviously this is not drawn to scale, but for the ordered pair 5, 13, that would be right here. 6, 16, so 6 might be right here, 16 is a little higher than 13, so 6, 16 might be right there. 7, 19, so maybe 7 is right here and 19 is up here, that might be right here. Eventually I'm going to be able to connect these dots and that will create the function of f of x equals 3x minus 2. If you really think about what 3x minus 2 is, you'll remember that the format of a straight line, a linear line, is y equals mx plus b, where m is a slope and b is a y-intercept. Well, remember I told you the y is the same thing as f of x. So you can think of this f of x, and you can scribble it out and replace it with y. So what we really have is y equals 3x minus 2. And isn't that in the same format as a straight line? So that tells us the m is a 3, so we have a slope of 3, and minus 2 is our b, so we have a, a y-intercept of negative 2 over here. So that's why this line, I didn't draw it very well, but pretend this is a straight line with a y-intercept of negative 2 and a slope of 3. All right, good luck, guys.